So, okay, welcome back everybody. So it's the second half of the lecture by Prof. Dr. Azmi Muhammad Tamil. Can we continue, Prof? Yeah? Is that all right? Okay, uh, I need to answer one question. How is correlation and regression presented in the final manuscript? Which value is important to include the, in the manuscript? Usually, we do not put in the regression value. Okay, we, we usually we just only present the correlation. A regression is only presented if you are trying to come up with a solution for the people involved. Okay, and you're saying that uh, my study is solid. It is fantastic based on the equation that I came up with. You can gen you can postulate what is the going to happen if we have the following risk factors. So we only we, we only use the regression uh, in big study lah. Big study we are saying that this this results is applicable to the population at large to determine whether someone is at risk or not at risk of getting a certain disease. Okay. As for the correlation, we just state that uh, whether the person is uh, moderately associated, strongly associated, fair, uh, fairly associated, or weakly associated with the outcome, based on, and then we put in the R value. Yeah? We put in the R value. Uh, the P value is not really of much use. Why? Because if you have a sample large enough, larger than 40, any R larger than 0 0.3 will become significant. So that is therefore, but most of the journal still insist on having the p-value. Okay. All right. Okay. I hope that's clear. Okay. Last part for statistic. Uh, the, the next one is going to be uh, on research method effect. Uh, so this one is in terms of statistics, this is the last part. It's non-parametric, but I'm just going to cover with Wilcoxon and Kruskal Wallis. Why I'm not covering uh, Fisher exact test? Because Fisher exact test already been covered on Friday. So that is why we're only covering uh, Wilcoxon rank sum test, Wilcoxon sign rank test, and the Kruskal Wallis one way. I don't know. So as mentioned on Friday, uh, we always explore our data set. Why are we exploring our data set? Because we need to check what the characteristics of the data. We, want, we need to look for errors and correct them. And we want to see whether the data is normally distributed or not. Okay. Uh, sometimes if you still want to use parametric method, you may require to transform your data. Your data. Uh, transformation got many ways, got many methods. If your data is ordinal in nature and uh, consists of a set of questionnaires, you may want to use a software like WinStep to transform your data uh, to generate uh, a con one continuous value. Or you may use uh, either to log or inverse log or whatever to, gen to convert the data to become so that it, uh, it has normal distribution. But most of the time, when the data is not normal, you have to analyze the data using non-parametric techniques. Yeah. Okay, so what kind of technique? It depends on your number of group of observation, the type of data. Uh, we already mentioned distribution data when it's not normal, okay? So the beauty of non-parametric uh, test procedures, it does not depend on the population distribution. Data may be nominal or ordinarily scaled. Okay? And instead of using mean and standard deviation, you use parameters such as median or rank. Okay? So it is based on analysis of ranks, like the Wilcoxon rank sum test. So as mentioned earlier, the, these are some examples of non-parametric tests. We, we have Fisher exact test. We have Wilcoxon rank sum test, or what you all call as man-to-man -man with test. We have the Kruskal Wallis one way ANOVA test. We have the Wilcoxon sign rank test, and we have the Spearman and Kendall rank correlation. Okay. 
So let's go to the first one. Okay, then. then okay. <clears throat> So the first one we are going to do on the Wilcoxon rank sum test. So basically you got two groups. You got two groups. Uh, the data that you are trying to compare is uh, continuous data or ordinal data. And they need to be compared in these two groups. Okay. If it is continuous data, they, are, they tend to be not normally distributed. I think I, I forgot something. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't share. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right. So, as stated, uh, it tests the two independent population median, Y median. Because data is not normal, so therefore we use median instead of mean. Okay. Basically, it's very simple. You just rank them up as though they are from one group, and then you sum up the ranks according to the group. And very hard to understand when you say it like that. Okay. So here's the example. So you have the blood group sample between taxi drivers and bus drivers. Okay, one and three. So one is the bus driver, three is the taxi driver. Okay, you just sort it out uh, according to the uh, order. Okay, so you have uh, glucose level from lowest to the highest. Then you rank it up, start one until eight. After you're done, you sum up the rank and then you refer to the table to see whether the p value is significant or not. Okay. So this is the table. Okay. Okay. But of course, uh, easier to do using SPSS. So this is SPSS results. Okay. Uh, during the break, I already downloaded data from the example uh, website. Okay. So I'm going to open up the data set now. So I'm going to stop sharing first. Stop sharing, stop sharing. Zoom webinar. Stop sharing. Okay. So I'm going to go to the data set. I'm going to open it inside SpaceX. Okay. So this was the data set that I share again. Share, yeah, share, after that, share. Zoom webinar, share screen. Screen one, okay. So this is the data set that I downloaded earlier. So I'm going to demonstrate for the uh, man with detect C. So I'm just going to extract the data set, okay. So I already extracted it into the desktop. Okay, demo. Okay, so this is on para. Okay, main with taxi. I got so many windows open, but right now even the spaces are confused. Okay. Okay, so this is the data set. So the one I showed you earlier, the taxi driver and the bus driver. So you can see here, uh, Kerja, one is bus, three is taxi. Okay. So to do the uh, non-parametric test, click Analyze. Non-parametric test. Okay, legacy dialog. Okay, 
Remember, there are two independent samples, bus driver and taxi driver. So they are independent. Okay, so right now my slide is the Lari. Okay, never mind. So grouping variables is under kerja. So the grouping is one and three. One and three. Okay, glucose level goes to the test. What do you want? You want men with you test. Uh, doctor, you mentioned uh, you mentioned about Wilcoxon rank sum test. Wilcoxon rank sum test is what it is called in the UK. Uh, men with knee is what it is called in the US. Uh, men with knee is not one person, it is two different person. One from the East Coast, the other one from the West Coast of the US. Uh, but uh, Frank Wilcoxon is a guy who came up with the idea first. Okay. So, but they call it man with the test to differentiate uh, from uh, the from the pet uh, from the Wilcoxon rank sign test. Wilcoxon sign rank test. Okay. So that's why you have this sort of names. Okay. So you run. Okay. And you get the answer. As you can see, the p value is the same like what we got earlier. Okay, it's 0 0.655, therefore it is not significant. 0 0.655, therefore it is not significant. <coughs> okay. Uh, the, the, the data is from Dr. Tamil link, yes. Uh, the question asked, do we look, download the data from Dr. Tamil link? If you want to follow, yes, you can. It's the same one. Now, parametric data, we use median instead of mean. Uh, why is that so? We already discussed that last Friday. Uh, because non, when the data is not normally distributed, the data is skewed. Therefore, median is the best way to, to describe the data. We already covered that last Friday. You can refer to the notes on Friday. All right. I know you all cannot see the question. Why got the value from? <laughs> uh, the value is like that, but it is uh, basically the average. Eh? So. Never mind. Uh, they generate the, the Mavini test, the Mavini test, and the Frank, uh, the, the, and the Wilcoxon method. It is the same, the, they are based on the same concept, but they just look at from a different angle. So for the, uh, okay, you, you look here, you look, it's on 6 and 21. If you look at the analysis, I'm going to open the PowerPoint so that it shows directly in the same page so that I don't have to jump. Okay, so this is the six. See? When they are referring to the six, they are referring to this six. Okay, it is, is it? before the 6 or is it after the 21 okay so when they say 6 and 21 they are really referring to the border they are really referring to the border inside the table so when you see this value 6 and 21 they are seeing the the border for the man with knee you're also seeing the border for the wilcoxon w so what does it mean it just means that when you're referring to the table I know because I went there quite fast, so I did not want to bore you with the details on doing uh, analysis manually. Okay, 6 and 21. For it to become significant, it should be 6 or less, or 21 or more. So here, the value is, uh, the, sorry, the value was 15, sorry, the one state from the smaller group. So the value was 15. So the value was 15. 15 is between 6 and 21. Therefore, it is not significant. It has to be below 6 or above 21. 
So when you see the value May Whitney 6, you see the Wilcoxon Z value of 21. They are really referring to this table. They are really referring to the table. So that one. So what do we are we looking for? We are supposed to look at the sum of ranks. So the sum of ranks of the smaller group. The sum of ranks of the smaller group is 15. The sum of ranks of the smaller group is 15. So tengok the we are looking back at the table. So the sum of rank of the smaller group is 15. So 15 is between 6 and 21. So therefore, it is not significant. It has to be 6 or you know. If you, uh, if you download the notes later, I will explain the only way for this thing to be significant is for all the values are at one end or at the other. Okay? For all the values to be at one end or the other. So uh, let me just show you that PowerPoint. Okay. All right. So this is the PowerPoint. Okay. So the only way for the result to be significant is for the data of the smallest group to be at one end or the other. So either they are all at the starting point, one, two, and three. So therefore, they are, the so sum is six. So sum is six becomes significant. Or at the other end, six, seven, eight. So six, seven, eight is 21. And they can, uh, they can be at the, the other end. So that's the only way for non-parametric to be significant when the data is distributed at one end or at the other end. Okay. That is the meaning of that man with knee U and will cause an W inside the inside the SPSS. Okay, it is not something that you calculate, it is the value of the cutoff point. Alright, I hope that's clear. Yeah, I can try it with the output. output. Okay, so this one six is the lower border, 21 is the upper border. For the value to be significant, it should be six or less or 21 or more. So here you look at the smaller group, it is 15. So 15 is in between, therefore it is not significant and therefore the p-value is not significant, 0 0.655. That is for the uh, Wilcoxon rank sum test. So why they call it Wilcoxon rank sum test? First you sort it out as one group, you rank it and you sum it. That's why they call it Wilcoxon rank sum. So you rank first then you sum. The other one is will cause a sign rank test. Will cause a sign rank test. Okay, let's go to the will cause a rank sign rank test. Bam, 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 bam. The bomb can see lemak, lemak lah, tak? Okay, stop sharing. Okay. Let's go straight. Let's go straight to Wilcoxon sign rank test. So this one is tabale. You get the sign first. You get the sign first. Double A. Double A. Try again. All right. It goes back to the original one. <laughs> okay. Never mind. We just. We go to Wilcoxon sign rank test. Okay. So under the Wilcoxon sign rank test. Remember, they are pet data. They are pet data before and after. Okay. Let's 
So here's a, the, the data set of blood pressure taken at two different times for 36 patients. This is a systolic blood pressure. So basically, we are, we are arguing that people who are rested got better BP compared to those who are not rested. So BPS1 is the BP taken before they are rested. BPS2 is taken after they are rested. Okay. So first we give a sign. So what sign are we giving them? We are giving a sign of positive and negative. How, for, how is it possible for them to get a sign? By the minus the value. By minus the value, getting the difference. So here we have the BPS2 minus the BPS1. So you get a sign. What is the sign? Negative 16. Okay. So we get negative. For those all the BP that drop after resting, and then we got the positive for all the BP that increase after resting. Okay, why the BP increase after resting? I think maybe the first time do the BP taken by a guy, second time BP taken by a girl, so BP went up. But the rest they are okay. The after resting for five minutes the BP drops. So chanted beautiful. So the BP. So get the all this BP has that has dropped. I know you, you are laughing, but that's the true thing happening in clinic. Last time I had a very beautiful clinic assistant uh, taking the BP uh, at the clinic. So all these clinics had patient come to the clinic for for, uh, for uh, medical checkup before retirement. The minute they get this lady, the BP goes up sky high so after that i have to check the bp in the in it when i they see my face my face ugly like hell so the bp drop so whenever they come see me so after that i come up with the ruling i don't allow the pretty girl to take bp anymore and she was angry at me until now she said still angry at me but in fact it is a form of praise because I don't allow her to take people because she's pretty. Okay, so you want to have a good clinic running with a patient that BP never control, you get a very beautiful nurse in charge taking out the BP. Guarantee patient will always be behind. All right. So there's a story about that. So there's a need. So you can see get the difference. So you see the difference. There's a 409 and 152. So we got two groups, the, the negative group, quite a large number, and negative group, the sum is 409. And the positive group, we got a small number, and the sum is 152. So which one do you take? We take the smaller group. Okay, right now I'm looking for my cursor. I don't know where is my cursor. The problem with having three screen, your cursor can travel. Okay, you total up the range according to positive and negative. Take the smaller value. So here is the 152, smaller value. And you refer to the appropriate table and you find out that uh, the cutoff point is 171. Therefore, the null hypothesis is rejected. So you can see here, this is uh, the p value. Our value is one seven one. Sorry, our value is one five two. So one five two falls under between zero point zero two and zero point zero five. So it's here. So therefore, it is significant. Okay. Okay. So I already given you the the data set for SPSS. Okay, you can see here under Nampara. So I have this Wilcoxon sign rank test. This data set. As you can see, there are 36 data set. There are 36 data set. Okay, these are the the original data. 
my apologies for the where B, uh, I know you going to say doctor where BP got decimal sorry uh, BP don't have decimal okay so we're going to run the Wilcoxon sign rank test so click analyze okay remember non-parametric legacy I don't know why suddenly they got, don't have a legacy because they are the legacy okay so they are related sample so two related sample so two related sample so what are they bps1 and bps2 transfer the right remember what you want you want the wilcoxon sign rank test so it is the wilcoxon don't take the sign don't take minima take the wilcoxon sign rank test click ok total option you can click this but it is useless Okay, I already tried before, I click all these things, but they are all useless. So you got the answers, you got the results. So what we're interested in is in the value. So the value is P value 0 0.021. Yes, it is very, very significant. Okay. So what doctor, what is mean by negative rank, positive rank? Just now you saw already, are they negative, are they young? Positive. So there are only 12 positive, there are 21 negative, but are the tiga yang seri. Uh, these people totally cool here, before and after sama je. Oh, thank you very much. Forgot to see. I don't know why I'm sharing the wrong screen. Thank you. So I'm going to share again. I'm going to do this again. Ah, ah sharing the wrong screen. So allow me to share the correct screen again. Screen one. Okay. All right. Thank you, Priya. So I'm going to restart again. Analyze. Non-parametric. Two related sample. Put in the BPS1 and BPS2 side by side. Okay. Select Wilcoxon. Click OK. So only Priya seems to be awake right now. <laughs> All right, so we get the answers. So the answers are like this. Again, we look at the value. So the value is like this. Okay. So you can see that these are negative ranks, positive rank. You saw already, we got 21 negative ranks, 12 positive ranks. Uh, we got three times. So we need three times, we remove. So uh, we look at the 33 only. And the p-value is 0 0.021. And therefore, you can make the conclusion that yes, there is a significant difference of the blood pressure before and after resting. Okay. So now I stop sharing. I'm going back to the slide. Screen 3. Share. Okay, so we are now at screen three. So you can see that with this. All right, so. Okay, so conclusion there. There is a significant difference of blood pressure measured at two different times. BP before rest is significantly higher than after rest. How do we know that? That by looking at the negative ties compared to the positive ties. We have more negative ties compared to the positive ties. Okay. So we're going to look at the last one, which is Fusco Wallis. Okay, I hope you see the Google Scholar list. Uh, Google Scholar list, when you have three or more independent groups of observation, and the data is not normally distributed. All right. So, the test is as though you're looking at chi square. I don't know why my mouse is moving outside of the 
Yeah. So here's a formula for Kurzweil Wallis. Uh, formula is wrong. Why it is wrong? The bracket are missing. So there are, there are a few brackets that supposed to be there that is supposed to help to calculate. But we're not going to worry about that. So here is a 50, we have 15 machines. And these 15 machines uh, have a different filling up time. So we're going to see the analysis for the, these three machines. So what happens, we have to give the rank. So you can see here on the left side, these are the timing. So we're going to give the rank from the fastest to the slowest. So this is the fastest. And here on the number 15 here, this is the slowest, this is 21. You give the rank, you sum up the rank, and then you, told, uh, then you put, take the sum of the rank into the formula. So you take the sum to the, uh, of the rank into the formula, so it, it looks like this. So you can see here, this is 65, this is 38, this is the 17. Okay, so you put in all the brackets. Now in this one, you can see the brackets. Okay, and you come up with the value of H, 11.58. And you refer to the table and you get the p-value of less than 0 0.005. Okay, so that is how you do uh, cross call wallis manually. But of course, the easiest one is to do it using uh, SPSS. And to use SPSS, okay, I'm going to stop sharing now. Then I'm going to share the SPSS screen. Screen one, okay. File open. So I'm opening the SPSS. Okay, open data set. Where is the data set? It's on my desktop by the name of Nonpara. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the cross call Wallis test. So cross call Wallis, I click cross call Wallis. I got this three machine. Machine one, machine two, and machine three. So you can see you've got machine one, machine two, machine three. And the time required to fill out all the different machines. So we're going to run the cruise car wallis. <coughs> so to run the cruise car wallis, yeah. Let's see if I can change or not. SPSS. No, tak boleh. Okay, tak boleh. Never mind. Okay, so I'm going to run the analysis. Click Analyze. Non-parametric. Cruise call list. So cruise call list, they adalah independent group. So independent group, this K independent samples. So K independent samples, you put in the machine and the grouping variable. Machine got one, I think machine three. Then we have the time required to fill up the machine, master. Test interested, cross call Wallis, click OK. Why do you call it cross call Wallis H? Because it is the H statistics. So you can see that the p value is the same 0 0.003. Okay. Zero point zero zero. Doctor, this one that the sum different uh, because this is mean rank. So if what times five times five times five, you end up with same one. If this one times five, you become seventeen. This one times five, you become sixty five. Okay, so that's why the value is different than what we did manually. All right, and with that, we finish the non-parametric. Okay, and I hand over back to the chairperson before we proceed to the last and the final topic, which is the toughest one.